Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles. I want to welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and where we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we have a very interesting episode for you guys that you definitely want to stick around for. So make sure you go ahead and like the video and subscribe to the channel. Anyway, let me get into this topic uh, here. Now, as you all know, uh, sports fans, we're guilty of many, many different things, right? We're guilty of many, many different things. Um, one of the things that we're guilty of, and I see it a lot on some of the polls we put up on the channel, is that sometimes we're guilty of being prisoners of the moment, right? Like, you know, you see something happen and then people's opinions change so quickly. One day people are saying this, the next minute people are saying something else just because something happened, right? So generally, sometimes we can be prisoners of the moment. Uh, sometimes we do get a little bit too over emotional. And this goes for all of us. This goes for me. This goes for people watching. This goes for everyone. But sometimes sports fans, you know, their emotions, um, you know, uh, get the best of them. Um, and sometimes we are guilty of falling in love with big name players to the point where it starts to cloud our better judgment. Sometimes us as sports fans, we hear two or three big names and we're like, okay, th these guys are going to dominate everybody, blah, 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 blah. Especially when you're talking about the playoffs, right? If we're talking about the NBA and basketball, usually people are going to go with the biggest names, right? The biggest names generally tend to get the most attention is one of the reasons why going into the season, if you all remember a lot of the odds makers and a lot of people in media and some fans, they just picked the teams with the most star power to be the most successful teams. You can think of the Lakers. Most people thought that the Lakers were going to be the team to represent the Western Conference. Why? Because you had LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook, um, you know, Carmelo Anthony, you had all of these big name players. You're like, so how can this team not do well? You look at the Brooklyn Nets. So this is like, you know, this is just basically, you know, business as usual um, in sports. And sometimes when we go too far, this habit that we have sometimes comes back to bite us in the butt. Going into these playoffs, Many people pick the teams with the biggest name players uh, to be uh, to be to be victorious. But for two straight rounds now, we have seen the t uh, you know we have seen teams with the better collection of players overcome the biggest names. This has happened for two consecutive rounds, and one person that has been right all along has been. Chris Broussard. Chris Broussard has been unwavering in his support of the Boston Celtics these entire playoffs, even when they were down. So for those of you who miss Chris Broussard, basically telling everybody, listen, this team is the team to pay attention to. We want to play a little bit of his comments about the Boston Celtics uh, and some of the things that he's been saying about this team throughout this playoff run. And we're going to come back here and react to it. So take a listen uh, to some of the things that he's had to say here. Broussard, I'll start with you. What, what was your biggest takeaway from the Celtics game two blowout win? My takeaway, Jenna, is that it's over. That's right. It's over. Oh. All right. Let's go oh. home, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Let's go home, ladies and gentlemen. Oh. It's over. Wow. Yeah, I'm going full Kenny, Kenny Smith. Wow. And this is not, this is not a prisoner of the moment take. All right, look, uh, Miami no. may win another <laughs> sure? game. I actually predicted Boston in six, but they're not winning this series. The Celtics are simply the better team. We can all see it, okay? They're better on paper. They start four high lottery picks. Miami's starting two undrafted guards because Kyle Lowry's out and a second-round pick in P.J. Tucker, who's turned himself into a nice player. But the talent at the top is Boston's way. They're better offensively. They're better defensively. They're better via the eye test, all right? This is That's going cool. to be the, what do we they have outplayed them for all but 12 minutes of the series. All but 12 minutes and that is with game 1 missing two of their starters and both games being played in Miami. Guys, this will be Boston's easiest series. And I know you're saying, "What well, well, they swept Brooklyn." Yes, but you know <laughs> All four of those Still games were close. Brooklyn, let, let me finish. Let me finish. All four of those games were close. A couple of them, two if not three of them, could have went either way. And you had the dangerous 
Kevin Durant, and the dangerous Kyrie Irving there. Miami's got a dangerous <laughs> Jimmy Butler, but that's about it. Tyler Hero's their second scorer, and he's going to get torched on defense. And so, and Milwaukee obviously was a tough series for Boston. Brooklyn could have beat Boston. Miami, Milwaukee could have beat Boston. Miami can't beat Boston. Only Boston can beat itself in this series. Wow. And if they don't do that, as long as Boston doesn't get the big head, like they're listening to me, don't get the big head, even though I'm saying it's over. No. As long as they stay sober-minded big head. and keep working hard and doing what they've done throughout <laughs> these playoffs, which I'm sure to believe they will, then they will win this series, Nick. It's over. Now, in addition to all of those things, Chris was really the first person I heard really compare the type of defense that this Boston Celtics team is playing to a 90s brand of defense. He was the first person that made that comparison. I didn't think of it. I didn't think of it at all, right? He was the first person that said that. And then a lot of people started picking up on that, right? Even when Boston went down in some pivotal games, especially if you think about, for example, you think about, you think about that Milwaukee Bucks series when he dropped some of those home games and he had to come on there on first things first. And Nick Wright, you know, the, the running joke that they have on the show here, you know, Chris, I'm, I'm extending you an olive, olive branch or whatever it is. And he's like, no, I don't want your poison laden, you know, olive branches. You can keep it to yourself and all of these. He still kept on that. He still stuck on the Boston Celtics bandwagon and it looks as if that this guy may have been right all along about this team i was even i was even listening uh to an interview uh, uh you know what is it um a segment of uh what is it uh, iman shumpert on vlad tv and i can't wait to see all the other episodes because he's usually you know he's very very entertaining when he goes on there and starts talking about basketball and even him Iman Shumpert, they asked him, you know, Vlad asked him flat out, who do you think is going to be in the NBA Finals? He said, I think it's going to be the Golden State Warriors and the Boston Celtics. So even him, he clearly sees the potential of this Boston uh, Celtics team. And I think that Katie and Giannis went up against something that was even greater than I think the majority of us uh, realize, if I'm being honest about it. I don't think the majority of us even thought, like, this Boston Celtics team, is serious now even though you know the bucks were without chris middleton it really doesn't take away from just how good this boston celtics team is in my part it, listen this team literally has everything and they do pretty much everything well right they have they, first of all they're a great defensive unit number one but they also have the defensive player of the year they have a big shot maker and a closer in Jason Tatum, who at times can run their offense for him. They have a legitimate second scoring option in Jalen Brown. They have, uh, what is it? They have bigs that can stretch the floor. If you're thinking about Al, Shor uh, what is it? Al Horford and Grant Williams. Y'all remember Grant Williams hit seven out of 18 threes that he attempted in game seven against the Milwaukee Bucks series to really close out that series. Um, you know, they, they have bigs that can stretch the floor. They have bigs that can guard, uh, you know, players from three, four, and five. They can guard all positions, right? This team pretty much has everything they're young they have a very you know they have a very good coach it may doka i hope i pronounce his name up properly and i wouldn't be surprised trust me i wouldn't be surprised if this boston celtics team won it all and personally if i'm being honest with you i really wouldn't mind it if i'm being honest i, I wouldn't mind seeing a young team uh that no one really expected to win it all this year going into the playoffs and come out and be victorious it'd be nice you know get get some different names up there i wouldn't be mad at all it wouldn't bother me whatsoever and i just think that um you know chris broussard has been right on the money about this team all along and in fact it looks as if Giannis and katie and these guys were going up against something greater we're going went up against something greater than maybe even we realize this boston celtics team um could be a juggernaut